let's talk about some of the guidelines which research suggests about providing written feedback to students on their works, on their different drafts. So these guidelines are very important and interesting and I want you to keep these in mind while drafting feedback for your students. So there are some practical insights uh, which researchers such as Nation and McAllister and Ferris and Hedgecock they have given. So these suggestions include that we should construct our responses as teachers that are helpful, that are precise, that are personalized and that are encouraging. I mean our responses should be constructed in such a manner that it should look a commentary on student work not the student themselves. Instead of writing you have written a nice introduction. You can write the introduction looks interesting. So this is how we can make it much more personalized, make, make it much more unbiased and make it much more uh, encouraging for the students. There are three stages. Number one, uh, what to know and what we are looking for. Are we just correcting the grammar? Do we need to correct the argument, coherence, organization? Or do we need to just provide the comments? Or if it requires to help students maximize the feedback. I would suggest you to combine these three approaches and make it a practical experience for your students. There are various approaches which we can incorporate in our daily feedback strategies. For example, we might come up with some strategies which clarify to the students what we want from them and these we share with our students. I mean, we don't hide. We clearly, explicitly make the assessment criteria explicit to the students. What introduction means, what conclusion means, what coherence means, what organization means, what argument means. So the use of a scoring rubric or an assessment checklist or a criteria, these are important elements. Checklist can be in the form of a table. For example, there should be a uh, space for grammatical accuracy, space for mechanics, space for argument, space for organization, coherence, and overall development. So we, we should make it explicit before going to the classroom, sending it to the student, emailing them, and coming when they come into the classroom, they come with, with, with prepared minds. So uh, we might think of selecting one or two or two or three high points of feedback which need to be prioritized. So in this way, these approaches help us make our feedback much more helpful and practical for our students. So in summary, our feedback should focus on not only the strengths but, uh, and weaknesses, but also it should be a kind of should look a motivating discourse. And this can be made through electronic feedback as we have discussed by adding marginal commentary or uh, it could be in the form of written comments uh, which the students can check or it can provide in-class opportunity to the students. So the good feedback is the one which invites students seek clarification, invite them for further dialogue or encourage them for further negotiation. So these are the guidelines for teachers to give effective feedback.